11th of October, the House joins the global community in commemorating the International Day of the Girl Child. This day highlights the challenges faced by girls around the world while celebrating their resilience, potential, and crucial role in shaping a better future. In recognition of this special occasion, we have the privilege of welcoming girls from public secondary schools across the federal capital territory who are present today to observe our proceedings. Their presence is a reminder of the importance of investing in the education and empowerment of our young girls in Nigeria. Furthermore, the House is proud to introduce Ms. Isabel Anani, our speaker for the day. Isabel is a remarkable young leader and a girl advocate for gender equality. She is also the youngest member of the Technical Working Group for Adolescent Health and Wellbeing in Nigeria, as well as a UNICEF Young Influencer. Isabel was chosen for this prestigious role after emerging first among candidates across Nigeria following an open call and a rigorous interview process. Throughout the day, she will shadow the right honorable speaker, both during today's plenary session and in meetings as part of our effort to empower young leaders. In the spirit of this celebration, I call on all honorable members to join me in a round of applause for Isabel and for all Nigerian girls who continue to demonstrate immense strength, ambition, and determination in overcoming barriers. Thank you very much. <laughs> Ms. Isabel, is she around? Please proceed. Honorable colleagues, for a moment, you have a new speaker. And I urge you to give her all your support and cooperation while she presides. Welcome, Ms. Isabel to the Green Chamber and to the executive seat. I advocate for you. Congratulations. You. you may sit down. My name is Isabel Anani, and I welcome members to this important session of today's seating, commemorating the International Day of the Girl Child. I thank the Right Honorable Speaker and the entire House for the honor of assuming this symbolic position as speaker today. Without wasting much time, I call for the first motion of the day to be moved by Honorable Kafilat Obara, Chairman, House, of Co House Committee on Women Affairs and Social Development. I represent Koshofe Federal Constituency. I am from Lagos State, the center of excellence. I rise this morning to move this motion in commemoration of the 2024 International Day of the Girl Child. The House notes that 11th of October globally, the world celebrates International Day of the Girl Child. This year's theme is girls vision for the future the house also notes that international day of the girl child is a day adopted by the united nations to remind young girls of their uniqueness strength and prize it is a day set aside to address issues such as early or child marriage violence against girls rape child molestation education deprivation nutrition legal rights and all other issues faced by girls, and to support more opportunities for girls and increase awareness for gender inequality. More than 1.1 billion girls are poised to take on the future. Every day, girls are breaking boundaries and barriers, tackling issues posed by stereotypes and exclusion, including those directed at children with disabilities and those living in marginalized communities. The protection of the girl child is crucial for sustaining the continuity of mankind as they grow into women and mothers who not only shape the future generation, but the trajectory of nations. 
The House is aware that gender discrimination is a global phenomenon that engulfed many nations of the world due to patriarchy and cultural stereotypes, while other nations have made giant strides in closing the gender gap. Nigeria is still grappling with these issues, starting from access to education, healthcare, and access to basic amenities. Despite Nigeria being a signatory to the Convention of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women, CEDAW, Convention on Child's Rights, and many others, like harmful practices, like the female genital mutilation, is still being practiced in some parts of the country, which is a direct violation of human rights of women and, of course, the girls. The House is informed that recent analysis shows that girls are not only courageous in the face of crisis, but hopeful for the future. According to the World Health Organization, children growing into adolescents, especially between the ages of 10 to 19, have limited knowledge about the natural processes of puberty, sexual health, pregnancy, or reproduction. This period of their lives is a period of rapid development of knowledge and skills, learning to manage emotions, relationships, acquire attributes and abilities that will necessarily be, ready, be necessary for them to enjoy adolescent years and assuming adult roles. When they are sexually abused at this sensitive season of their lives, it affects their growth and development and their overall well-being leading them to becoming dysfunctional adults in some instances due to psychological and mental trauma. The House is worried about this disheartening high number of out-of-school girls engaged in drug abuse as well. Current data indicates that Nigeria has an estimated 10.5 million girls that are out of school who are also users of hard drugs. The House is worried that the presence of such a vast number of uneducated youth not only jeopardizes their future, but also poses a threat to the nation's security and socioeconomic stability. If deliberate efforts are not taken to address the challenges and be intentional to protect the girl child, the country will be at risk of raising dysfunctional mothers who are meant to protect the home, society, and the future, the prayers. The House resolves that we urge the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency and National Orientation Agency, alongside other stakeholders to collaborate with schools, community organizations, religious institutions to educate the public on drug abuse dangers and promote drug-free lifestyle to make provision for rehabilitation and also urge the Federal Ministry of Education to devise practical ways such as implementing mobile education, the units or community outreach programs to curb out-of-school girls across the 36 states of the Federation. That the National Assembly to see to the amendment of the Child's Rights Act to provide protection for sexually abused children and provide necessary legislative support in terms of budgetary approvals to the concerned ministries in this regard and also see to the domestication of the Child Rights Act throughout the nation through the conference of speakers. That the leadership of the House to ensure the swift passage of bills that seek to protect women and girls like the Gender and Equal Opportunities Bill. That we mandate the committee on women affairs and social development, basic education and services to engage the NDLEA, Ministry of Education, NOA and other stakeholders by organizing workshops, creating awareness campaigns and monitoring progress to ensure compliance. I so move, Madam Speaker. I hereby ask for any seconder. Hello to me, Junior. I represent the good people of Ikiti North, one federal constituency which comprises Ikole and Oye local government. I'm honored uh, to stand to second this motion. I have two daughters uh, who I believe are very inspired by um, the Right Honorable Speaker today. Uh, I rise to second the motion. Those in favor of the motion say aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it.
this motion is to the Committees on Women Affairs and Social Development, Basic Education and Services to engage the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLEA, Federal Ministry of Education, National Orientation Agency, and other stakeholders by organizing workshops, creating awareness campaigns, and monitoring, pro and monitoring progress to ensure compliance. Thank you. October 11th marks a very important day in the lives of girls all around the world. It is a constant reminder of how far we have come and how much progress we are willing to make as Nigerians. The theme of this year's International Day of the Girl Child is girls' vision for the future. For me, I envision a future where every girl, regardless of where she comes from, has an opportunity to flourish, where education isn't seen as a high pedestal privilege but as an essential tool to equip girls make important decisions that affect them and ultimately the places they come from. According to the United Nations, nearly one in five girls are still not completing lower secondary school, and nearly four in 10 girls are not completing upper secondary school today. As if these numbers aren't concerning enough, they are at a constant risk of harassment and the what-ifs that are associated with violence, which simply should not exist. I want a future where we don't have to combat all the overwhelming experiences of childhood and adolescence alone. Where girls aren't discriminated because of their bodily functions and are encouraged when they want to take the mantle in places like politics and STEM and feel safe and feel like they are wanted. As an aspiring woman in STEM, yes, I'm an engineering student, I know what it is like to be the only girl in male-dominated spaces. However, I don't want to be the only girl. I want to be one of many. I want a future where the healthcare system for girls isn't discriminated against due to, so, due to the sociocultural, sociocultural factors that so wrongfully exist. Girls are breaking boundaries, regardless of the stereotypes and exclusion, which include the marginalization and, listen, and living with disabilities. And they are doing so regardless of what society says. I've been able to be on the ends of both, of, of both tables, fortunately. I've been in rooms like this, with change makers, advocates, and leaders who are ardent about change through my work in advocacy with Plan International. That side looks hopeful and bright. As, that side looks hopeful and bright as the advocates and leaders are willing to make this change. The other end is where I have heart-to-hearts with my friends and people around me who think that they cannot be anything compared to their male counterparts. That end is gloomy and bland. Now more than ever, we need girls to combat problems of climate change, political conflict, economic degeneration, diseases, and global unrest. We need to ensure, every girl, we need to ensure that for every girl, there is access to healthcare that protects her and understands her needs access to quality education that enables her to reach her potential, safety from violence and harmful practices that affect her physically, emotionally, and mentally. How can she dream when she is worried about what her next meal might be? How does she take charge if she lives in constant fear? Most importantly... Order, order, please, order, please. Most importantly, she needs support because we all have a role to play. She, need, she needs policies that are made with her interests in mind. She needs opportunities, not just a seat at the table, because anybody can get a, a seat at the table. But she needs to get that seat and feel like she can conquer, because conquer Honorable she can. take your seat, Honorable Ebiente. And we have to understand that in our call for action, firstly, there needs to be engagement. Girls should be a part of policy making, because who better knows what girls want than girls themselves? They should be in rooms like this constantly. Gender-inclusive budgeting and gender-inclusive policies should be made for girls to empower and protect them in, in making sure that they maximize their full potential. Safe schooling is very important because there's simply no, nothing for girls if she cannot have the education because she lives in constant fear. Sanitary pads and hygiene products should be made available and they should be made as cheap as they can be. The good thing is that we are already halfway there, and every day we are a step closer to achieving these goals. Also, there isn't just one solution, but hundreds. There isn't just one girl to talk for, but millions. 
In order for us to continue at the steady progression that we have so rightfully ascertained, we mustn't just provide her a seat at the table. Finally, I congratulate all the women in parliament that have pushed through and broken stereotypes. Girls around Nigeria aspire to be like you. And to all the he for she's who uplift the girls they know and to continue, st to continue striving, we see your efforts and we deeply appreciate your strive for equality. And don't forget that the marathon continues, but fortunately, we are already halfway there. It is now my pleasure to invite the Right Honorable Speaker, His Excellency Honorable Abbas Tajuddin, PhD, a he for she, the original one at that, to take over the business of the day. Thank you. House Leader, please, please move that the session comes to a close and reverts to, to plenary. Majority Leader, please second. Honorable colleagues, these... Julia C. Hovere, O.N. O.N. Federal Constituency, Edo State. I rise to move that this session be brought to a close and to revert to plenary. I so move. Madam Speaker, my dear colleagues, Kingsley Chinda, Hobby Above Federal Constituency, I rise to most humbly second the motion that we do revert to normal plenary. I so second. Those in favor say aye. aye. Those against say nay. <laughs> the, sorry? The eyes have it. Honorable colleagues, this session is adjourned. Is adjourned. Sine die. Thank you.